Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel. I'm James and this is Clearwater Fishing. And today we're talking about how to use Google Earth to research your lakes, create waypoints, and even get those waypoints onto your graph. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and like this video because we are digging right into how you can research your lakes and not even leave your house. So the very first thing is I'm gonna show you what program you need. So the simple, the simple Google Earth that you can get on your phone or your tablet isn't quite what you need. You really need to get on your desktop so we can look up past maps and look at those. These are good, but we're gonna be taking it one step further. All right, so I already have the program I need, but I'm gonna show you guys what we're talking about. So you need to go to Google Earth on whatever browser you like to use. So we have Google Earth. We'll just type that in. All right, we're gonna click on it. And you'll come up to this page here. So we don't wanna just launch Earth or anything. We actually want to go down and find Google Earth Pro. Earth versions, oh, it's up here, my bad guys. Earth versions, we wanna go here. And we want Google Earth Pro for desktop. You click on that, boom, and you're gonna to wanna to download this and install it onto your computer. Since I already have Google Earth Pro, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up here for you guys. And there we go. We are looking at planet Earth. What we're gonna be doing is looking at specific lakes. So Lake of the Ponds in Texas, right there. Boom, we're gonna click on it. Uh, gotta click search. And as it zooms in here, I'm gonna show you some of the functions. So you can already see that I already have a couple waypoints put on here. I was playing with it. So let's look at the waypoint button. You can uh, click on the waypoints here and create and drag a waypoint anywhere on the map. You can name it and then you're done. Uh, I also recommend uh, creating a file over here. You can uh, go under my places, right click and add a folder and say, hey, this is a uh, lake, lake of the ponds. Boom. Okay, so we got us a new folder and we can make a whole bunch of waypoints uh, on this folder. So we'll just leave it as untitled for now. Boom, and this is important for later for when we uh, export this. So Lake of the Ponds and then underneath that is the untitled place mark. So the next function we really need to take into account here is the back in time button. I think that's what it's called. I don't even know what you call it. Historical imagery button, sorry guys. So you wanna click on this historical imagery button. Uh, it has a clock with an arrow pointing counterclockwise. You wanna click on this. And uh, potentially we're gonna zoom in right here where I have this extended point. There's nothing really interesting going on here on one of 21. So and how to work this guy is you just really just click this back arrow and it gonna, it's gonna take you to the next point in time previously that has an image. So April of 2019 has an image, April of 2017 has an image. And what we're doing here is we're looking for when the water was low. Okay, that's a little lower. Let's see if we can find something lower. Okay, now, we can, we can go back further in time here and look, but we're not gonna find a lower point than November of 2011. I've already checked, so you guys don't have to. If you want to, you can also look under your government agencies, uh, whoever controls the water in your state, uh, or at least records the depths. In Texas, it's the Texas Parks and Wildlife. Uh, you can always look it up there to look at the lake levels at this point. Uh, in November of 2011, the lake was about seven foot low. So we're gonna be able to get a lot of great data from looking at this map. So zooming in, using my scroll button here, we're gonna look at this point. 
Now I know I put a couple extended points here because I wanted to make sure that I knew that it was connected. And then I also see something a little interesting here, maybe a rock pile or a brush pile. So if I was really researching this lake, I'm going to put this little waypoint here and I will actually put on here for the title, uh, brush or rock. Because I can't really tell what it is, but I do know it is a point of interest. So we're going to zoom back out and see how uh, the brush or rock is underneath the Lake of the Ponds. We'll, we'll need to know that here in a minute. So we've done a little bit of research and obviously when you're looking at when lakes are low, you want to look all around uh, and see what you can find. So like here is a rock pile, rocky point, some, some kind of interesting rock. So I would want to mark this too. Boom, Rocky Point. I'm going to put Rocky Point. That's a pretty interesting area. You know, I would actually probably put some more points out here to identify the entire set of points. But it's really open to your interpretation on how, how in-depth you want to get on some of these. But we're looking for really cool points of interest and this is one of those let's see if we can find something else so what's really convenient is that you can go back back and forth from a higher lake level to a lower lake level and kind of see what's covered under the water so for an example right here there was something here now it's not that may have been removed by whoever lives here i don't I'm not really sure uh, it doesn't look like it's still there at this point in time, so we're going to move on and ignore that piece of structure. So here's an interesting little area. So right now the water level is probably in this range. And we're going to go back in time. And you have this kind of a bowl here and a few small pockets here. It looks like maybe there's some some kind of structure there some cover there's obviously a lay down right here look at this lay down that's a great place for fish to hang out at but you can kind of see this is a, a unique bowl and we have this shallow flat here that is next to some deeper water a great spot to be fishing for wintertime bass maybe some pre-spawn bass great place to be fishing for those right here especially when the water level looks like this so there's obviously something else interesting here uh, I can't really tell what these two are uh, but you can tell that this guy here is here still in this image so obviously it's pretty something pretty big and I may want to mark this for whenever I decide to go fishing on Lake of the Ponds so uh, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put in here for the title uh, it could be a rock, I doubt it, but I'm going to put rock or a tree. That way I know that uh, don't go flying over this guy. Also, this is a great tool to help you navigate the lake a little better, uh, mainly to avoid really problem areas. You're not going to be able to see those isolated stumps, but you can see those stump fields and avoid those completely. So now that I've shown you uh, a little bit about Google Earth Pro and some of its basic functions, and I've made a few waypoints for you guys, now I want to show you guys how to make those waypoints to where you can install them into your fish finder, such as Lowrance or Garmin Unit, and we'll even touch on the Hummingbird. So we got our waypoints here under Lake of the Ponds. We're going to right-click on that, and we want to save this place as. So we want Lake of the Ponds. I made a file called Lake of the Ponds and we want to save this as a KML file. Pretty easy. Lake of the Ponds, KML file, boom, done. So the Lowrance and Garmin units cannot use KML files. We're going to have to change those to GPX files and I will show you guys how to do that. 
So we're gonna open back up Chrome here and we're gonna simply Google KML to GPX. We're gonna click on this first guy. I think this was the one I used. Yep, this is the guy. And we wanna take our file that we just made, Lake of the Ponds, remember where we saved it, what it called it, Lake of the Ponds, boom. We're gonna continue. It kind of shows the area where, hey, the points are at. We want to make sure the output format is GPX. Everything looks good. What we're going to do is convert now. We want to download that. Now this file is going to be in your downloads. It's not going to be where we just uploaded it from. So I'll show you guys how to get to that. You're going to want to open your Windows and you're going to go to Downloads. And here's our Lake of the Ponds file. My Geo data. And then we're going to want to copy this. And I'm going to put it on my Lake of the Ponds file that I've already got over here. I'm going to put it in here as a GPX file. Boom. So now we have this here. All we really need now. is an SD card reader. That's what this guy is. You can get them for like 10 bucks at Walmart. You need your SD card. Uh, this one, you know, has a micro SD card and then it has the adapter as well. We'll save, we'll plug it in to the computer. We're gonna save the file. We're simply just gonna copy the file here. We're gonna copy it. We're gonna go to USB drive. And we're just gonna paste it in here. Now we'll just take this SD card, plug it into our unit, and follow the instructions on your specific unit on how to extract these, this file and import all that data onto your fish finder. Now each fish finder is a little bit different, so you may want to Google uh, the specific instructions for your unit. But overall, most of the newer units, you plug it in, it'll identify it, and it'll ask you if you want to upload these files. Now, the other part is it's not always that easy. So before you try it, you wanna make sure you have the instructions on how to do it and not be so frustrated. This method is a great way to do research on lakes that you haven't ever been to, and you're looking for some interesting areas to fish. It's a little different than just looking on the map. You're actually looking at the physical layers of the lake, especially when you can find a time when the lake was a little lower. It's a great way to identify those pinpoint perfect spots before you even get to the lake. Don't worry, hummingbird guys. I didn't forget about you. I know that hummingbirds don't use GPX. So I'm gonna show you guys how to convert these files to what you need. But first, we need to download another program to our computer. I know another program. What we got to do is find Humminbird PC. I've already Googled it once. Maybe Humminbird. I know it's here, so we're going to just click on that first version. Humminbird. Up, oh, download software. Download here. So this is where you want to download the program. And once you have it downloaded, you'll have this little icon on your computer. Humminbird PC. So we're gonna open it up. We're gonna open up a GPX file. Let's see if I can find it. It's on my desktop. Lake of the Ponds, Lake of the Ponds, open. So once you guys have this uploaded, it's really, really easy. Uh, you want the drive that you're gonna be installing it on already plugged in, like me. And you're just gonna simply click the up arrow. Nope, these all look good. And we're gonna click continue and the upload is successful. And that's all you need to do. The file is already on there for your Hummingbird unit and we can plug it directly into your Hummingbird unit and your files are ready to go. So I wanna show you guys the file real quick. That's the matrix here. That is the file that Hummingbirds use to install waypoints and download waypoints off the units. 
It's not too complex, but it's really just another step. So sorry about that, but if you want to have a hummingbird unit and do this method, that's kind of what you got to do. So you still have to go through the KML to the GPX and then go from the GPX to the hummingbird file. It's a little bit of a pain, but I think most of us is, are okay doing that because it really didn't take me that much time to take care of business. So all you gotta do now is plug that back into your hummingbird unit. Typically hummingbird units will immediately ask if you wanna upload that data. Click yes and you're done. This is a really great method for researching your lakes uh, before you go to them or even in the winter time when you're planning out some trips for the spring or summer or even fall. It's a great time when you can't really get out on the water to look at the lakes. Uh, maybe find some routes that seem a little safer or maybe just find some key areas that you want to fish. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. It'll help me out, help this video out. And uh, if you know someone who also likes to research their lakes before they go to it, please share this video with them. Uh, it'll help me out as well. But you guys, remember, just like always, until next time, Get out there and go catch you some fish.